All right. So um, I have uh, two questions. I'm studying. Somehow we came to back to the Anunnaki. Uh, Anunnaki was studied by Zachariah Sitchin uh, using cuneiform tablets, and um, a lot of interesting stuff was discovered there. What's cuneiform? Cuneiform is uh, clay the tablets. Writing? With, yeah, it's oh a, yes, the writing. Okay, with uh, d -d 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 straight pushes of the oh, yes, edge. The, you put the, the edge into the into the uh, yes, clay. Yes, I know what it is now. Yes, it's the it's the alien kind of writing. Yes, I know. Good. Everything is alien here. Yes, it is. You're absolutely right. <laughs> but. Um, we still, uh, so the point is that we clearly see that Anunnaki was a pure bloodline, but we don't know what species was that. Somehow it is escaping our, at least it didn't, I didn't get to, to the answer yet. So that would be the first question. So it would be nice to hear from these pure bloodlines who they are and, uh, or maybe Enki is good. I even think we spoke to Enki once, but I don't remember the answer. So what is their biology? I'm interested in biology of Anunnaki and origins and where they are now. And the second question is in the same direction. So Anunnaki is Babylon, Assyria, Syria, Iraq, Iran, that area. Um, Terek, Yathrat, no, sorry. Uh, the, the rivers, the rivers there. Tigris and Euphrates. Yeah, this one, Tigris and uh, Euph Euphrates. Euphrates. So that's where Anunnaki were creating um, their kingdom. And, but what, what's interesting, their pictures there are very modern. They look like modern humans and even Anunnaki are depicted as modern humans. No, I would look like perfect Anunnaki there. Like they look profile and uh, like that. Typical Anunnaki with a beard. So um, the question is, are they, were they humans? Were they like, um, okay, someone else. Uh, the, the second one is um, Chinese. I just heard the legend that there was a, a yellow emperor which arrived on fire dragon and created and give, gave Chinese all the, um, basically their knowledge and empire. So I wonder who this yellow emperor was. That was way back, yep. Uh huh. Okay. Um, do you want to talk to someone from Anunnaki first? Yep. I, right. I remember Enlil and Enki. That's the only one. Enlil, Enki, Anu. Uh huh. Um, uh, Enlil is one of the sons that we learned about later. Um, but I don't remember all of them. I remember Enki was a friend of humans, but like Prometheus. Maybe it was again uh, our friend Khufu. I don't know. Enki was a friend of humans because, but Enlil wasn't really. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's what I, that's the thought process that comes to my head. So, all right, let me see who, I'll, if I can get a hold of Enki. This is Enki. Enki, thank you for coming. Welcome. Um, thank you. Who are you? Oh, I believe uh, I've seen you before. I think we met before. Your so, name is my... Maxwell. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, Maxim. I'm Maxim. Max Maxim. Rampo. Uh, oh, yeah. So um, the main question is the biology of Anunnaki. Um, who, 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 are the, who are you guys? We're from the planet Nibiru. Mm -hmm. 
Nibiru is a hmm, hybrid planet. You will see that we came, we are the purer form of that hybridization, but there are others that look less like humans than we do. We're actually the ones that gave you the human look. We, we wanted you to look more like us because you were so ugly. So we wanted you to look better. So we gave you more of the look of the Anunnaki so that we could socialize with you a little better, so that we could work with you a little better. You were so ugly. Anyway, that was one thing that we did. That's why you see us as looking so human. It was that you did not look human when we found you. There were others. There was many different species, your Cro-Magnon, all those, those Neanderthal era beings. There were definitely separations between them. They were not all the same. You understand that, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Yes, uh-huh. So therefore, we took the ones with the best gene pool, uh, well, actually the second best gene pool. <coughs> the one with the first best gene pool was, we couldn't use it. It was just not, not able to be worked in with our uh, thought processes. We did do several experiments with the DNA, but we're not able to get it where we wanted it to be. So we used the second best gene pool and that seemed to work out the best. So the first uh, best gene pool was, um, um, what's their name? Um, they blocked my mind, I'm sorry. Uh, That's all right. Atlanteans. Mm, well, we weren't working with the Atlanteans yet. No, not them. Uh, we were talking about Aboriginal gene pool on your planet. Those were not Aborigines from your planet. Those were aliens that came to your planet. So we weren't testing on them. We were testing on the Neanderthal, the Cro-Magnon, the all those different nons, those different uh, ape men that were early humans. And the, I don't know which one you call it, but the second best gene pool was the one we used and fashioned a greater human out of it. Mm -hmm. And so- How about Sasquatch? Sasquatch is an alien species. They say they are local. They are local now because they've made a home here. They have underground homes and they have uh, places, but they are not in a great populace on your planet. They're, they're maybe a few thousand at the most. So when you did uh, create humans, was it before the Atlantean prosperity or was it like at the end of it? It was toward the end of uh, Atlantis uh, uh, thought process because they were starting to have their uh, fights with the, uh, inner fights among themselves and their uh, and with the Lumerians and it was a it was a rough time toward the end there. So there was a lot of civilization already going on and here you come and create humans on the um, Sub suburbs of Atlantia, like somewhere in, uh, in the wild? Some area uh, where you call Iran, Iraq, that area. That so, was more, more homey to us. So Atlantean, was, hmm? Atlanteans weren't there? They were there visiting, but that isn't where they lived. They lived on their continent. They did a lot of uh, trade and business work here. Uh, but they did not live here for the most part, uh, maybe a few of them, but not as a group, as a, as a species, they, 
and as a group, they were more on the, the continent. They were more on the, the area called Cretan Roads and the uh, Mediterranean islands and the, and also a, that was just a, one of the sections that pushed in into the Mediterranean from the Atlantic Ocean. They were there outside of Africa. Um, at Portugal and down were there, was their area on the continent. So um, was uh, Rama and Indians already in place or is it before them? Uh, it's before them. How about China? China was, is ancient and has uh, had some uh, inhabitants there, but we were not uh, trading with them at the time. We were not really uh, caring about what they were doing over there. Uh, we had our own worries where we were. So in China, there was no Chinese, right, at that time? Mm, not as you would see them today. But were they humans? There was some, yes. So when you created humans, there were some other humans. So what's, what's the difference? The difference was how we changed them and how we made them look. So there was like Chin. Uh, how do you say? Did did the modern Chinese originate from what you created, or they originated from? No, they, they were created more from the Octorians. So, ah. the Octorians were in charge of the Chinese or the Asian area at the beginning. So we we did not interfere with that alien group over there. So Arcturians created Asians, and you created Europeans. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That changes a lot in, in, in that mystery. Wow. How about Israelites and Jews and uh, Egyptians? Now, they, they're, the Jewish population is also alien, but in a different way than you might think. They are, uh, they are ones that wanted to escape barbarism from their planet and so they moved into this area to escape from their own world and uh, com and their own made their own communities etc so they were also aliens of a specific kind what kind More from uh pleiadian space what's their star their star mm -hmm. Um, the star is the same star that you would see around Era. Tageta. Yes. So the Jews are from Tageta. Yes. Wow. Do you know the name of their planet? It was... Um, uh, they called it something different than it's called now. It was called... Torena, I think. Okay, maybe Jerusalem or Israel. It might have been called something like that, but I don't know. All we right. let them go. They were on their own. They were very tribal. Right. Uh, so, is it right that you created uh, um, Europeans as slaves? Yes, that was the first usage. First, our first creation of uh, slaves were very ugly. They were, they were not human looking at all, but they were strong and able to gather what we needed them to do. They were able to get the gold. We, we were mining for gold on your planet. That was our number one thing that we were doing here. We needed more gold and this was a very large area for it. I still feel the urge to dig so I think I inherited some of what you implanted in our genome. Yes, so we we created uh, slaves to bring the gold up from the mines and to create, uh, to bring, uh, to be our 
slaves, basically, uh, so that we wouldn't have to work so much. Because on this planet, we were seen as gods. And that was sort of nice. It was sort of nice to be looked at that way. We weren't seen that way by the people on our own planet. So we sort of embellished it. We gave ourselves wings uh, to, to some extent, and people thought uh, we could, uh, we were angelic, and we did a lot of things to make people uh, believe we were even greater than we were. Uh, do, do we have like uh, reptilian genetics too? That is the other half of our planet, the hybrid part that we are talking about. We were the more human side. There is a more reptilian side on our planet. We, uh, we intermingle, but we usually do not breed together. We are two separate societies and we do not anymore have a warring faction between us, but we do um, not always see eye to eye as you might think. The reptilian mind is very cruel at some points, but they say, they say our mind is. So we, we sort of have different kinds of cruelty, I guess. But um, we try to not be cruel after a fashion. We try to improve ourselves. We are still flawed, as you might guess, but we're not as bad as we used to be. We did pay a price for what we did for humanity. God was not necessarily very pleased about all the things that we did on your planet, uh, but he wasn't pleased with the Arcadians either, which brought you Zeus and all those creatures. And he wasn't very pleased with uh, some of the other species either. Are you still in the body? Yes, Is it the we same? like bodies. We don't have to be, but we we want to be. Uh, do you still have the same body as uh, you had in that time and the time of creation of humans? Mm, well, I'm no longer alive. I'm in the, I'm in the spirit realm at this point, but the. Mm, the bodies of those of our people are now a little different than they used to be, yes. Oh, how different? Well, they are, they look bigger, they're a little stronger. The, the, um, the planet, you call planet X or Nerubu or Nibiru or however you pronounce it here, is um, it's a very old planet now. And our peoples have moved to several other planets as well. So we are evolving by uh, becoming used to different atmospheres in different places. That's one way we're evolving. The other way is through uh, DNA enhancement. We're stronger, we're more vital, our vision is greater. We have eyes like hawks. You, you would call them hawks or eagles or birds. We, our vision has been greatly improved. Our hearing as well. And some of the other uh, physical attributes have been enhanced. <clears throat> so what happened to Nibiru? Oh, Nibiru still exists, but it's not in your dimension. You understand, Nibiru is fourth dimensional or now fifth dimensional. Uh, the beings on it are higher dimensional even still. So when Nibiru comes around, you won't see it, but we can move backwards through the dimensions. So we can come backwards into third dimension and check on you whenever we want. However, we haven't done that for a little while. I'm not sure why they haven't. They have other things on their mind and they're moving outward from their area and not looking backwards so much. So Anunnaki is not, are not involved in modern um, 
politics? Oh, yes. There are some Anunnaki that have been grandfathered in from eons ago. They did not want to leave this planet. They always wanted to be leaders and seen as powerful people. So they're, they're still powerful people on your world. Do they have still have the bodies from the past? How long do, do those bodies live? No, they've enhanced themselves and made themselves into the bodies of humans. They just get a new human body after 50 or 60 years. Oh, so they recycle the bodies? Well, no, not recycle, change the bodies. Yes. How we, do they, they change them? They create the they create another physicality the way they want it to look, the way they want it to seem, but their personality is very similar in all of them. How do they um how do these bodies grow through the childhood? You have to still grow the body before you can uh, fully That's get right. it. How do they go? There are the mothers who are aware of what is happening and they come from a different place and they, they volunteer to be the uh, carriers of said Anunnaki children. So the children get what? So the spirit goes in, goes through the childhood as well, right? Yes. And what, oh, what yes. and the mother is are... But you see, but it will grow up into the same, the, the, the change is rather quick. Uh, what you don't see is that we can manipulate time in the sense that you may see that child growing up slowly through your time to, uh, periods, but we have advanced the time and know all the things that, that are going on. And it will, it will seem like that child is growing up in your time space, but it is not. And the mother is an alien? Yes, of course. What kind They're of alien? They're Anunnaki as well. They are there to be the mothers of said individuals. So these are four dimensional mothers which kind of volunteer to go into third dimension and bring the child? And many of the times they appear to either die at childbirth or do not live long beyond it. Ah. And then uh, they, they come back to their home planets? I'm not going to tell you what happens with them. That is, a, that is sort of their prerogative to decide. But there are several choices they can make. So there is a, you can easily go back and forth between your world and, uh, and the planet and our planet? You can. It's not something that is really very acceptable to our people. They do not like it that there, there's some Anunnaki still interacting with humans. They don't like that. But yet it still is happening. And I guess it's accepted, but not really uh, looked at as a good thing. So you created Europeans. Uh, so all of the Europeans were created by you mostly, like um, Spaniards, English, Germans, Russians, all of them are the from basic your roots? look, yes. But there's more than one look of the European people. We did a lot more than just one kind of DNA uh, manipulation. So you'll have a little darker, more olive colored skin people in, that are Europeans, like in the Italian areas and, and Greek areas perhaps. And perhaps those that are a little lighter skinned, um, uh, they settled in different places. What happened to Africans? Africans are not settled by us. The Egyptian people, um, the Orions, and those that came down from Orion, the uh, Alpha Centauri, some Octorians, uh, those are a different species altogether. 
So your your hybridization project was one of many others. Yes. How about Australians? Australians are also uh, no. Australians came from um, the European area, except for the Aboriginals. I mean, Aboriginal Australians. The Aboriginals are a tribal group that have been there for thousands of years and are telepathic. They are um, they are well advanced beyond what humans possibly can understand. They can create. They are, they are, they look at the rest of humanity as uh, de uh, deformed and mis misguided. So they're a very pure form, a very pure race. And they are from uh, the, um, where, where are they from? It's been a long time since we've interacted with them, but we did used to do trade with them thousands of years ago. They are very advanced, but these ones are uh, the ones that are on your planet want to be here for a certain reason. They will make themselves known to your people after a while because they will be the leaders of your people eventually. I believe that Very cool. Very they cool. are working toward that. Um, they are called the Mumim, Mumimba. Mumimba. Yes. Very cool. Now, there is an interesting um, Something interesting happening is happening in Tasmania, but that's okay. Um, what the, is it? Uh, I met someone from Tasmania, like um, um, he is uh, clearly a European from um, dwarf race. I mean, he's big, but uh, his uh, behavioral traits are of uh, dwarfs. Yes. And they have their own sort of kingdom in Tasmania or more like, um, Corporation, I would say, but kingdom built, kingdom like corporation in Tasmania. Very interesting. So yeah, I wonder yeah. if they have, um, uh, and they work with alchemy. So I wonder if there is some um, relation of there to Australian. Pygmy, there, yes. It is hard to keep track anymore what has happened on your world. There's so much intermingling. It is a melting pot of all different kinds of species. That is what makes it so interesting. So I do not know where these people are from. Thank you. So my question was, uh, one, one other question which I had was uh, about your um, way of keeping uh, clean bloodlines, pure blood yeah. bloodlines. Um, so what is the role your, your uh, people married to relatives, something like that? Clean bloodlines do not have to be like that. You can cleanse your bloodline DNA. Uh, uh, you can clen cleanse your DNA, and it can be a pure bloodline once again, even if you are not uh, a purified race, meaning that we do have hybrids elsewhere, but we can purify our bloodlines even after that hybridization process. What's the advantage of having pure bloodline? Well, when you have a pure bloodline, you at least know all the basics of the DNA. You know where it all is, what all works with it, and all the different vari variations of it in the most basic forms. Of course, there's zillions of combinations and zillions of baselines. However, there are certain basic elements of the Anunnaki people that we want to keep intact. And so those things can be clarified and kept within our, our species. Cool. Uh, so 
I remember Sitchin discovered that, I mean, described that your, most of your marriages were within the family. Most yes. of to cousins and um, granddaughters, something like that. It is true. We do like to do that and keep the family clean. And you see, we can do that and keep, um, keep uh, madness away, if you want to call it that. Interbreeding on your world would cause eventual, eventual disintegration of the race line. However, with us, we can keep it fresh and clean by doing DNA cleansing. So that will keep our, our uh, DNA perfectly fresh and we can interact within the family realms and keep some of our family uh, heritages intact. Um, how do you cleanse the DNA? It's a, a scientific method, of course. We have what you would call a healing box. It is. It looks like a sarcophagus, if you will. But you get into it, and it can be set for different kinds of medical treatments. One of those treatments is for DNA cleansing. And that would help us to keep our DNA purified and not overly corrupted during uh, for these kinds of activities. So you use some sort of waves to uh, mutate DNA into pure form? Yes. It is, there are several different ways. There are several different ways and waves and different things that must be worked on, not just one thing, the vibration of the DNA is corrected, if you will, and brought back into pure, pure vibrational concept. The, the vibration has much to do with how the outcome of the being is. If a child is born and they are not correct, in some way, they can put in, be put in this and their vibration purified. Is it done in 3D or 4D? It's done in fourth dimension, fifth dimension. So it wouldn't work here on this planet? We do not have such sarcophagus on this planet that you live on. But is it possible? There are some in 3D, but not on this planet. So is it, it is theoretically possible to build such, such a device here? Yes, it is. Now I'm um, thinking about our DNA being linked to some higher dimensional DNA, basically. Of course it is. Uh, the question is, what fraction is our DNA of the total DNA of the body? If, if, if you like, what's the ratio? Like one to one, or is like one DNA here and another there, or is it one to very many? Well, it depends on the individual. Um, DNA is different in every single person, as you know. So it can, uh, you can bring out different um, eras of your DNA with perhaps, let me give it you an example. Perhaps a child is born. And within this child, the DNA of the grandfather and the, the mother are most prominent because those have some DNA in of perhaps Octorian or an Orion. And so they have mingled together for this child. Those are the dominant uh, DNA likenesses or uh, personality of the DNA. So therefore, that can change as uh, children are being born, as DNA is being re-established, remixed and melded among the species. Now, you can purify that and make it different if you wish. Bring it back to perhaps grandfather's uh, original Orion DNA. Uh, a little bit purer into that way. 
you would not be able to take out the Octorian DNA completely, but you can lessen it and it can be, uh, it can be re, uh, what is the word? Re-scattered into the system in, in a way that you more prefer. Uh, I'm trying to figure out just very, very simple physics. Basically, I imagine we have our three-dimensional DNA, which we can see, but there is another DNA in a parallel dimension, which is also yes. there. Yes, it is. I just wonder what part of it is. Is it much bigger oh, pool of DNA it there? It is other dimensional. Yeah. Well, that also depends on the individual, but many times, it is at least, there's at least a third to a half of some of this DNA that can be other dimensional. So it's not like million times more, it's more like smaller amount than what we have physically. Yes. Like. And is it true for any life form like bacteria, dog, um, worm, fly, plant? Well, it, it's in different, if it, it's in different quantities and different kinds of life forms. For lower life forms, it can be 100% and 100%, meaning that it can have 100% of another uh, influence within that third dimensional 100%, because it is, uh, it is melding with something that is not in a thought process with it but yet it is um, symbiotic in some ways. So we are thinking about that our mind doesn't completely reside in this dimension. So somewhere right. else is a big part of our mind and big part of our mind is uh, emotions. I wonder who is in uh, control of our emotions. It looks like sometimes it's completely out of control. So is it like, other beings are playing with our emotions? If you allow that, but not usually. Usually one has control of their emotions for the most part, I would think. We as Anunnaki have control of our emotions, although that is other dimensional in some ways, but not fully other dimensional. How about angels and other spiritual, like um, spiritual entities? Do they influence our emotions? They can, yes. If you allow other entities to influence you, they can influence you in different ways. You can give them that permission. Right. Um. Now I'm looking at the chemistry of DNA and trying to figure out uh, which parts of DNA resonate and how do they resonate. I see electron clouds in the DNA and I see proton clouds. And most interesting are, at the moment, uh, aromatic rings within DNA. So I see that aromatic rings seem to gain and lose aromaticity. Is it right? Yes. What would be the frequency of the switching between aromatic and non-aromatic state of DNA. That would be different in each individual. It's like gigahertz, terahertz, hertz. Oh, I do not know your hertz system. Like um, um, billions of times per second or one time per second per, 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 per say, nucleotide. I would say when we're looking at humans, I would say millions of times per second, it could be. It could also be hundreds of thousands of times per second. Thank you. Um, do you know about that yellow emperor which arrived to China on fire drug? The Octorian? Say again? The Octorian that came? I don't know, just tell me. I would, I'm sure it was an alien and I'm pretty sure that you're talking about the original Octorian that came uh, on a, a on a spacecraft that they called a dragon, uh, but um, he was very influential and was able to rally the people 
and bring them together in a way that they'd never been brought together before. So the humans already existed there to observe him oh, cool. coming, right? Well, there were there were things there, yes. There were beings there, of course. There were gominids. They were what? Gominids, hominids, sorry. It's gominids in Russian, hominids. Yes, hominids. Um, and uh, and they, he, he did some genetic engineering to of modify course. them? And genetic engineering was done in many parts of your planet. So when we when I look at that genome, um, we have a lot of alu elements, which, which take take about ten percent of our genome, and um, there is about a million of alu elements, each is three hundred bases long. Are, are these coming from you guys? What's the source of them? Some of them we added, but some of them are natural, organic. You have to understand this. When creating a, uh, a being such as yourself, there are many different ways and sources uh, uh, that, that can, a being can be put together and different elements put in, but all kinds of source elements are needed to keep things together. Just like an egg is needed to keep what you call a meatloaf together so it doesn't fall apart. So you need these other elements attracting one another and causing gravitational pulls within each other and causing uh, a solidification, if you will, of the being, of the, of the actual internal makeup, the, 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 um, the DNA, so that it stays in a certain format so that it can work properly. So yes, all those different things are there for different reasons and for different, and to bounce information off of in different ways. Some of them are highly conductive, some and highly uh, reactive. And so the greater the reaction or the conductivity of these trace elements, the greater you have uh, the greater response times, the greater uh, it, it sends things off to different places that will respond to these different kinds of actions and movements. Wow. Cool. Yeah, I'm the question sure. was, the, the question was, um, I, it just kind of, my mind is wandering in many directions, but the question was, um, some of humans were taken to the four dimensional world and they live just fine there. So it looks like we have all necessary components in yes. our genome to function on higher dimension. And you were moving in that direction, yes. Moving is, one thing, but it looks like people were taken without any modifications to a four dimensional planet and they were able to live there no problem. So it looks like we yes. have all the necessary genetic components for that. Yes. And it looks like if they are designed for higher dimension, then they probably wouldn't be used in this dimension. So it looks like in our genome, we carry a lot of higher dimensional stuff, which is not used here. Is it right? Correct. You are at, you're on the verge of a great change, that's why. Some are born into that change already and some are not. So how is the future species would look like? What do you mean? You will just be, it'll be the same but different. It will be, you will look the same perhaps but with different uh, aspects of your physiology meaning that you will be able to, um, it depends on how you evolve and how that ev evolution affects you. It looks like at this point, you will be able to move forward and become more interactive with um, much of your next uh, 
dimension density, if you will, than you are with this one. Yeah, nowadays the girls uh, become prettier and prettier. They have bigger boobs and sh uh, ni nicer shapes. And I just wonder if the humanity evolves to higher dimension, would this beauty be modified in any way? It will be to those in the eyes of the beholder. Your idea of beauty will continue to change just as it has from the past. But it will be that your idea of beauty will be enhanced. Because Eliron said to us that our boobs are exaggerated. They are not necessary and they are weird. So they, one... are, they are not necessary, but they are to you. To, they are not necessary to the Lyrans, but they are to you. So that is what it, they are talking about. This is your development and not the development of the Lyrans. You must understand that as cat people, they had more than just two breasts. And having two, four or six very large breasts makes no sense whatsoever. How about us and Anunnaki? Are we attractive to Anunnaki? Yes, we made you attractive to us. So you interbred with us too, naturally? Occasionally, yes, we tried not to do that. Uh, but I know that a few of our people did interact because they found some of our, their creations so uh, attractive they couldn't stop themselves. So they did. Uh huh. But you you don't have humans us uh, on your uh, walls, right? You didn't take us with you. We did take a few, yes. Just a few. More than a few. But and our time is up, I think. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, for the communication. You're welcome. Be well, my friend. Thank you. Don't think too hard. When you think too hard, then you overthink it. When you think just right, then you have the solutions. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hi. Wow. Okay. That was weird. Really? What What was weird? He seemed to very have a very high opinion of himself. That's what I thought. That's what my thought was. He was thinking very highly of his, he, he was thinking very carefully of his answers but he was thinking very highly of himself. And that made it, made it fun to talk to him because he was uh, all grace. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, he was able to tell me the answers which others would consider uh, secrets. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was, yeah, all right. Maybe that's the truth. Maybe we should talk again because I didn't ask him many questions. There was many more questions. All righty. <laughs> right. Uh, see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Have a good day. Good day. And thank you for everything. Uh, thank you too. Oh. What was that? <laughs>